Welcome back. Now, it's been 90 years since the first wow. dog was trained to join the Guide Dog Association, a charity which provides life-changing support to those who need it. And of the thousands of dogs that the charity have trained, you might recognise a couple in particular as Luna and Clover became members of this morning family. <laughs> She loves you. She does yeah. love me. It's Clover. Do you want some chicken? Do you want some chicken? <laughs> Luna is back. Oh, yes, you just... You got a friend in me. Now, baby, you've got a friend in me. I'm going to sit. Uh, perfect. Down. Good girl. Oh, Ooh, what's this? I know. Let me eat uh, something, please. <laughs> Got a friend. Yeah. You little devil. Well, to celebrate this special anniversary, we are reuniting with Luna, who joins us with her owner, Verity Smith, from their home in France. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my gosh, and here in the studio, our very first this morning guide dog, Clover, is here with her owner, Sharon. Hello. Uh, also Hello, joining us, Tim Stafford, who has the uh, very official title of Director of Canine Affairs at mm -hmm. the Guide Dogs Association. Uh, good morning to all of you. Let's morning. start with you, Tim. 90 years of Guide Dogs for the Blind, back to 1931. Um, you've been with the association for 36 years. So, uh, so have, has what you have done or what you do changed over that time? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I, it doesn't seem like 36 years. Um, I, don't look, I don't look old enough, do I? That's, that, <laughs> that's, the, that's the simple thing to say. Um, we're changing all the time, and it's so exciting. Um, we're, we're looking at different ways of reaching out and helping more people over and beyond the guide dog service, which, of course, we're, we're best known for. Um, and our dogs change lives in so many different ways. But we're looking to help people with sight loss, no matter what their age is. We've got people with guide dogs who are 14 years old. We've got people with guide dogs at 90 years old. And then, of course, we offer a range of different services to help people in ways over and beyond what we can do with our dogs. Well, we've got um, Sharon and Clover here in the studio with us. It's so lovely to see her. I mean, she really hasn't changed. Much. She's got a bit older, but she hasn't changed too much. It's good to see her. And for you having her in your life, I know she wasn't your first guide dog, but having a guide dog be part of your life, what difference did that make to you? Oh, a big difference yeah. to me. I mean, I was a, a cane user. I had quite a big gap between my second guide dog and my yeah. third guide dog. Um, and... I mean, the difference she's made to me in terms of my own independence to be able to travel, for example, on the underground completely mm -hmm. unaided. You know, I can travel from one end of London to the other end of London with the interchanges mm -hmm. um, without needing assistance. Brilliant. The assistance is very good on the underground, but I like being able to do it when I want yeah, to. Yeah, of course. Well, she even spotted thing. that you needed to go on the Jubilee line Jesus. without uh, without you, you know, sort of really giving her any hints. Yeah, I mean, I, I regularly do the interchange between the Northern Line and Jubilee Line, and um, the route that I normally take is via a lift in between the two lines. And recently I got to that lift and it was um, out of order. Oh. Um, and I just thought, there's no one around, and I was just like, come on then, Clover. Let's go and find the stairs. She trots off and she's looking down all the side gaps, finds stairs, takes me up two stairs, lots of stairs, takes me up an escalator, and then she takes me to another escalator. And she's adamant this is the right escalator. And I'm thinking, mm, should I do this? I thought, well, let's go for it. And we went down the escalator, trots off straight to the Jubilee line. Now, to my she's knowledge, a genius. Unbelievable. She'd, uh, we'd never done that and we'd never been shown that route. Obviously, she was probably hungry and thought, I've got to get home. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. she's a very clever dog, for sure. Did our training help, do you think? Oh, definitely. Yes, good, yeah. good. <laughs> we, we like to own these things, don't we? We've got, <laughs> she's we've falling got, asleep. Um, we've got Love Luna her. and Verity. Uh, hi to you. Oh, look. Um, and, um, and so how has she changed your life? How has she affected you? Oh my gosh, Luna, apart from making me smile every single day because she is just a bundle of love, um, she has just made my life possible. Um, without her, I mean, I couldn't live the, the incredibly diverse life that I have. 
Um, and she's she's a huge physical support, as in she's my independent. She's amazing. Um, but she's also, you know, she's also there emotionally. She's a girl's girl. You know, mm -hmm. she really does look after me. She's a she's a good girl. You can say hi to all your I, I can't believe how big she's got. She's huge there. Yeah. And you are... She um, is big. She's... <laughs> you are a Paralympic dressage rider and the nature of your job means you are out and about. You're in lots of locations where there may be a red carpet or lighting or cameras and all that sort of stuff. And you believe that her time here on this morning really set her up for that sort of thing? Absolutely. She, I mean, she takes everything in her stride. Nothing phases her. And to be honest with you, she knows there's a camera there before I do. She's like, yep, this is my best side. Um, she's absolutely amazing. Nothing phases her. I mean, thanks to this morning and her this morning family um, and her trainer, Michelle, of course, and guide dogs. She's, 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 She's amazing. Well, she's even sung with Andrea <laughs> Pacelli. I mean, not she wasn't supposed to, but she did. Oh, hilarious. Oh, she was she was fantastic. We were invited to go and see Andrea at a concert, and it was Luna's first concert, and um, it was the first concert that she'd been to an opera. And I think at the best of times, that can make some of us howl. And Luna's little nose went up <laughs> as Andrea started to sing, and I was like, "No, please don't howl." And but she, she did. She sang along. It's amazing yeah, to catch along. up with them. It's amazing to catch. I can't believe how much so they grow. Luna's huge. I know Luna is massive. We could never get close to sit like that. Could we? No, never. She never sat there like that for us. She's obviously very happy in her new home. Just with you. finally back to Tim because Tim. I mean, looking at the figures, it costs thirty-four thousand six hundred pounds to breed and train a single dog. So I'm assuming money is tight. Well, it, it, and we have such incredible support from the public. Um, everything that we do is, is, is donor funded. So we reach out to people, um, pe people like your good selves, um, who, who help, help to put the word out there of the work that we do, the impact that our dogs make on people's lives, and the fact that none of this would be possible without our army of donors, our army of volunteers, and some dedicated staff who, who turn little tiny puppies like Luda and Clover into the amazing guide dogs that they are today. Amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. It's lovely so to lovely see you. to see you. Thank you so much. But it's still to come.